So I think the bottom line here is the public, and, and an amazingly smart segment of the public, has absolutely run off the rails when it comes to understanding the relationship between food and health, and has just inappropriately blamed this whole thing on the food industry, and, and tried to tie it all to processed food. And, and this wholesome food movement, I think, is causing uh, a tremendous amount of damage. It's become very, very influential. Uh, a lot of these people are the young now, but they're going to be the policy makers of America. They're, they're having a tremendous influence on the population. Now, where does this idea come from? I think it largely comes from this book written by Michael Pollan. Michael Pollan uh, is a journalist. He's not a scientist. Uh, and uh, this book, The Omnivore's Dilemma, and, and versions of it have been really pumped up by the New York Times quite a bit, is constantly quoted to me by people who want to tell me why processed food is behind all the health-related evils we see uh, in the food world. This is what's quoted uh, by me by the person that I showed you in the beginning of, the, uh, of my talk, uh, the person out from Stanford. Uh, right off the bat, it was the, just about the first thing out of her mouth. And I, I've sat across the desk from scientists who have quoted Michael Pollan to me many, many, many times, to which I feel like saying, wait a minute, you know this is a journalist you're quoting to me, right? You're a scientist, and you're quoting a journalist to me to prove your point. Is something wrong with this picture? Oh, well, Michael Pollan knows what he's talking about. Okay. Sure he does. Um, I think what we're seeing here, now I don't want to pin this all on Michael Pollan. Uh, this is more, the, this, this is bigger than anything one person can do. I, I think Michael Pollan isn't so much creating a movement as feeding into one. And the movement is, is what I like to call the SNAP movement. And, and this is uh, what you're seeing now, basically you see it in colleges everywhere, and, and now of course these people are coming out of college and it's becoming really a, a, a more and more of a mainstream thing. And, and it combines uh, four different ideas. One is sustainability. Now look, I'm in favor of sustainability. You know, if you're against the planet Earth, raise your hand. How many of you hate the planet Earth and want to see it die? Okay, so, so we're all on the same page there. Uh, I, I'm behind that. But, but I find that in this movement, sustainability gets raised as a top priority to the exclusion of all other considerations uh, without any regard for feasibility or pract practicality. Uh, you know, if it's sustainable, then it must be what we have to do, no questions asked. And, and I have a problem with that. New age. Now, basically what I mean by new age is gullible. Uh, don't have a good understanding, are not able to think critically about anything related to science or many things related to science. Uh, and, and they really swallow uh, kind of silly stories and pseudoscience. Anarchist. Now, I don't mean uh, anarchy in the sense of chaos, lack of control. I think uh, anarchism as a political movement has been somewhat misunderstood that way uh, because of its name. Uh, basically, what anarchism is about is uh, not wanting central control, being against the idea of a big central government and big industry uh, controlling what people do. They, they want local control. We all just kind of get along locally and we do business with our neighbors and uh, we just kind of work things out in a nice way. It's, it's really it's a lovely idea. Um, and, and finally, Pollenites, they've been tremendously influenced, of course, by Michael Pollan when it comes to their thinking on food. So I think this has become a really important movement in America, I mean, philosophically. And a big part of it, and this relates largely to the anarchism part of it as well, is a deep distrust of industry, of big corporations in particular. And food corporations have really been singled out as, as just the embodiment of evil. Now look, we live in a capitalistic society, and if anybody wants to have a conversation about whether capitalism is the right way to run a country, I'm happy to have that conversation. I, I don't want to be put in the, in the position of defending capitalism. It is what it is, but, but let's, let's face it, we live in a capitalistic society, which means the way things work is that companies are going to be profit-seeking. That's the way it works. Uh, and this isn't about good or evil. 
It's about giving the market what it wants so you can make money. If you try to do that by doing evil, at some point the government will step in and say, cut that out. Uh, you can't go around killing people. But among the SNAP movement, there is a sense that large corporations are inherently evil. And you know, when I say to people, who do you imagine is running these corporations? I mean, where, where, where do you think they come from? I mean, what do you think they look like, these people? You know, last time I checked, there are people like you and me, they have kids, you know, they, they, they don't want to make people sick. I mean, how, how do you imagine? What, what do they think you, you guys do? You sit around and scheme for ways to make people sick? I mean, it's really, it's very, very uh, silly thinking, and it's, there, there's no logic behind it. So, so these folks can be, they can be very anti-medicine, they're anti-chemical. I mean, they're, they're anti a lot of the things that have made society as healthy as it is. Let's remember, health, society today is as healthy as it's ever been in the history of the human race. Uh, and, and this is largely because of these industrial movements that they hate so much. Now, instead of back to the future, what the SNAP movement is really trying to push us towards is, is what I call forward to the past. And this is the, an idea that Michael Pollan really pushes, that if we want to make progress, we need to turn the clock back to the wonderful world, the way things were 100 or more years ago when we all lived really long lives, free of disease, we had this wonderful relationship with plenty of food. We could eat as much of it as we want, and we were just super healthy. That's the way, apparently, our great-grandmothers lived, according to Michael Pollan, instead of the sick, disease-ridden society that we have today because we eat so much processed food. So Michael Pollan and others sort of conjure up this pastoral past of boundless health and, and, and the movement demands that we return to this wonderful past. Well, I, I think most of us understand that this is a past that never existed. 